All this is Dr. Mobin Sayed from drmobin.com. This is our third show for today. Welcome. And this is our random chit chat. So hope everybody is doing good. DDS is here. Hey, DDS. And DDS is first. Carolyn, hello. Hot chili beans. Hello. <laughs> How are you doing? I, li I like your name. Lorene Kirby, hello from Algebra Bean. Hello back to you. Uh, Doug, top 10. <laughs> yes, definitely. Jenna, hello. And thank you very much for being a patron. Um, I saw that comment in the last talk. Christy, hello from Florida. Hello back to you, Doug. Hello back to you, Zia. Hi, everybody. Back to you. And then Fizan. Doctor, what about hy hybridoma technique for producing monoclonal antibodies formations? That can be done as well. We talked about hybridomas in the past as well. There are certain monoclonal antibodies that are made using hybridomas, and that's fine. It's just a technique. At the end of the day, we are just looking for in the case of antibodies, we're looking to make antibodies. In the case of a vaccine, what we are looking to do is create that protein that will bug our immune system. This vaccine is better than many other in one more way, and that is we are not injecting any RNA or DNA or anything. People should not be worried about that. It's a bacteria, and the bacteria is not injecting its DNA in the cells. Bacteria is just making the spike proteins and, and putting them on its own head to say, hey, look what I got and our immune system then gets triggered and bothered and responds. Hi, Margaret. Welcome back. I hope your birthday yesterday was good, and ho I hope that you're enjoying and you're good. Um, so UNQ says, sir, triple mutation reported in India. Yes, so I read that as well, and I would talk about that too. Jason Klein says, can you talk about Lironlimab? I have talked a lot about Lironlimab, a lot of good things about Lironlimab. I can talk more if you want. Uh, <clears throat> Sumit Kesar Kesare says, can you elaborate what is a mutant, variant, and strain? Is double mutation a variant or strain? So very, very good question and very simple answer. Strain is when the virus has developed a new phenotype or genotype that is significantly different from the previous one, from the parent. It is still in the same species. For example, a strain of coronavirus is still a coronavirus, like SARS-CoV-1 or SARS-CoV-2. They are strains. They're still coronaviruses. It's not that one is bacteria and one, one is a virus. However, they have a huge difference. For example, I believe SARS-CoV-1 uses DPP-4 receptor to interact with our cells, while SARS-CoV-2 uses ACE2 receptor. So that is a huge phenotypical difference, although there would be a genetic difference as well. That means the gene of SARS-CoV-1 knows how to make DPP-4 binder. On the other hand, the gene of SARS-CoV-2 knows how to make ACE2 binding proteins. So that is a difference. Similarly, for a strain, if there is significant clinical difference, for example, I'm just making up, let's say SARS-CoV-2 causes respiratory illness and SARS-CoV-1 cause, caused only diarrhea. Now they are different in their clinical output as well, and they would be called different strains. On the other hand, if the species, if the genetic material is the same, is the phenotypical, the structure is almost the same, Clinical signs and symptoms are the same as well, and the virus has some mutations on it, then they are variants. Variants are generally capable of doing the same thing, but they are just changing themselves and, and kind of adapting to the system. So that is the basic difference between them. Zelena, hello, how are you? Roman, thank you. Back. So Roman, I had promised I'll, I'll work on the 5013C. And uh, I have my discussion tomorrow uh, with the rehearsal. So hopefully tomorrow, day after my accountant, and I will discuss it. So just reporting back to you. Um, Jenna, thankful for being here. Hi, Bambi. Uh, Jenna, hopefully you're doing better, right? From your comments, it seems like you are doing better. I hope and pray that you are doing better. Uh, Arun says, what is the difference between alpha and beta viruses? So similar thing, just like we have. Uh, strains, SARS-CoV-1 and SARS-CoV-2. There is There are even more changes on top of this, which are families of the viruses. So they are still coronaviruses, but there are some families that are called alpha and they have unique properties. And then there are some 
families that are called beta and they have unique properties as well. So this is their enzymatic behaviors. So based on that, they are separated out as well. The alpha virus that we talked about in the last one was a pig virus. It was an animal virus, plus it was an alpha type. Uh, the SARS-CoV-2 is a was an animal virus. Now it has become a human virus as well. And it is a beta type. Mary Martin says, Moonbeam back. Welcome. Um, Suzine says, and concerns about using the spike protein. So no, because the thing is this, with the other vaccines that are using spike protein, the concern is that, hey, the virus is mutating and it's, the receptor binding domain is mutating. So it is becoming either more refined or it is going to be um, defeating the antibodies, although we have not seen that to a great uh, percentage, but efficacies are getting lower. This specific protein, fusion protein, researchers were looking on the spike protein to see what are the areas which out of all the species of coronaviruses, alphas or betas and all the variants and strains, what are the most common ones? And they found the fusion protein on the spike protein. So that's a critical part. If you disable the spike protein, you have disabled the virus. And still, you found a constant area, which is critical for viruses function. You could find constant areas in the virus which are not critical. So if you attach something on my head and my hands are free to do things, I am fine. But if you hold my hand from doing something, then I'm stopped. So fusion protein is on the spike protein. It is critical for the virus to function. And it is constant. They found it and they make an antibody against it. Can we make a vaccine like this with mRNA vaccine? Yes, that would be mRNA for the fusion protein. Can we do it with adenovirus? Yes, that would be an adenovirus with the DNA for the fusion protein. Here, they specifically chose this platform so that it can be easily made because based on this platform, there are vaccines already being made in developing countries. So you could take this little bacteria, which they call platform, modified bacteria, give it to those factories and say, make more of them. And all of a sudden, for the general world, you have a very cheap vaccine readily available within two to three weeks. That was their one of their uh, motivation to do this work. Great work. I love it. I think it needs a little more... Uh, work and they the researchers didn't call it super vaccine it was the article so you know that uh, journalists nowadays they are a little clickbaity so super uh, super vaccine is not a bad thing to call this because it covers a lot it still needs some more refinement pam e says does it include the common cold no so common cold coronavirus yes but non coronaviruses no so it is still attacking the coronavirus family I see a few um, super chats, so thank you very much. I haven't scrolled down enough to see them, but thank you, folks. Uh, Chuck Becker. Dr. Bean is always a breath of fresh air with his uplifting voice and his uh, beaming, brilliant uh, countenance. Thank you very much. Um, so let's see. I am, uh, I'm going to see the super chat. So Michaela. Camberos, thank you very much. And William Goff. So William, continued thanks for everything you do. There is so much news and info out there giving people less and less hope each day. You are the only piece of news or education giving many of us hope. God bless you and everything you do for us all. Thank you very much, William. I hope that you are staying safe and you are happy and healthy and improving. Um, <laughs> Chuck Becker says, shouldn't hoof instead of paw it now. Yes. So today for in the in honor of <laughs> biglets, we should hoof it. Do they have hoofs or paws? I don't even know. Uh, Paul Bob says to Lisa, I only know what Dr. Bean has said. It's all new to me. So <clears throat> all right. So let's see some more questions. Kevin, Kevin, I saw you after a couple of days. Dr. Bean, with ivermectin prophylactic and our vaccine done, could you say this is a great protection? Yes. So uh, I want to share something because I think about that for myself as well. There are three, four aspects. So to answer your question, I can probably use this 
to kind of share this. So there is one as behavioral, behavioral, behavioral aspect, correct? Then there is a uh, vaccine aspect. Then there is the supplements and vitamin D and stuff. And then there is the um, ivermectin-like things, hydroxy, ivermectin. So now they all have difference in efficacy. For example, ivermectin prophylaxis is 74%. Vaccine, you have seen anywhere from 60% to 94 percent supplements we saw that for example vitamin d levels greater than 40 nanogram per milliliter protection about 99 percent in the in the specific age that they saw older age behavioral this also should have some protection some idea maybe let's say 95 percent so what i was thinking was when they all are exercised do we get an accumulated percentage and that becomes 100% or do they all <laughs> or some of them come in with their deficiencies and now after getting the vaccine and ivermectin and behavioral things and supplements, the person still is kind of deficient in some area and they end up getting the virus. I think it is a pretty good uh, protection. If we have survived so long by behavior, by supplements, I think adding more tools for our immune system to continue to fight and know the virus is better. So it is only improving it. Uh, Yakub says, if somebody is suffering from hypogonadism and low sperm, etc., after COVID and ivermectin, will the mate sperm and test worse? So the um, there has been one study that said that ivermectin can reduce the sperm quality and count, although there has not been any further uh, verification of it. Plus, with that study, they said that this is because of the oxidants produced. Uh, and think about inflammation like thing, but it's not exactly inflammation. So antioxidants, like, for example, selenium and vitamin E, if that is taken with ivermectin, then this does not happen. And also this study is done in rats. And the reason I bring it up is many studies, we just talked about a study that is done in piglets. I bring it up because some people were making fun of me that, hey, you talk about studies that are done in rat and then you try to say this can happen in, happen in humans. That, are how, that is how studies are done. They're done in cells, then animals, then bigger animals, then finally humans. So this study was done in there. So what is a solution? Selenium and vitamin E or vitamin C or any other antioxidant should help. So George says, question, are there any further, um, are there any further information about alternate spike protein interaction other than ACE2? Some studies mention CD147. So I talked about CD147, and uh, I think that that, although I talked about it, but it seems like that is debunked. It is not proven. So ACE2 is the one. Nikki says, do you think being previously affected with COVID-19 makes you more susceptible to GIT problems? That's a very good question. So COVID itself can cause gastroenteritis, one. Secondly, somebody who is infected and recovered can continue to shed SARS-CoV-2 for up to 59 days. Three, long haulers continue to have sometimes the GIT symptoms. So it seems like the SARS-CoV-2 can actually stick around in the GIT for some more time and cause GIT disturbance. Four, there are some vaccines when given they cause GIT upset. Now, is that because of the uh, thrombosis or, or is it just because of the spike proteins hanging around somewhere? Do not know, is it the cytokine, is it the immune system that has learned to behave in a, in a way from the infection of the spike protein, meaning the GIT could be upset. So to answer your question, can a person become more susceptible to GIT issues? That is not a data point that we know, but 
observation is that the infection can cause GRT upset, vaccines can cause GRT upset, and that can linger for some time. Well, I think uh, one way to test that is to try to work with your doctor to see, take ivermectin and see if that helps. If that does not help, then take, let's say, steroid and see if that helps. And if that does not help, maybe vaccine helps. So there are, then interferons can help. So there are a number of steps to do to rule out what is going on. Of course, in addition to the tests themselves. Colin Hamill says, would this new vax work with some with someone already exposed? Yes, yes. So the vax is a vax, right? So the th interesting thing is, let's say I, I am already exposed and my body did not make antibodies against the fusion proteins. Why do I say that? We have human coronaviruses in them. They should have this part as well, which is 93% common. So why do I still get SARS-CoV-2? That means the fusion protein may not have been there or human coronavirus may not have it. Now, if this vaccine is brought in, if let's say the actual infection did not produce antibodies against the fusion protein, then this vaccine is given and it makes the fusion protein antibodies and we are very nicely protected. And they talk about it, researchers, they talk about it, that they observed that those uh, patients who had the infection but were missing fusion protein antibodies, then when this vaccine was given to these cells, then they were able to make these as well. So I think it is an additional protection and a good one. So $22.22, seen you after a long time. Do you know if fetal cell lines were used in development, production, or testing of the new super vaccine? None of them. The reason for that is that the super vaccine is made in the bacteria. And the genetic material is not made in any of the cell lines. That is made in the lab. The plasmid is constructed. Then that plasmid is entered in the bacteria. Then the bacteria is the vaccine. Bacteria is poor thing or silly thing. <laughs> Somebody is going to put a comment that, why do you call God made things silly? I call them silly out of love for them. I like these little things that help us. I like these little cells as well. So just like we call silly the little babies. So that little silly bacteria is decorated with the antigens against which we want the immune system to react. So there is no fetal cell li line uh, involved. Uh, Chandra Sekhar Bura says, Dr. Bean, do you recommend taking cod liver oil capsules once a day to keep our immunity intact and also act as a good vitamin A and D supplement? Yes. And we have talked about this fish liver oil or fish oil is very, very important for anti-inflammation and has been done. Stu the study has been done to see that it helps reduce the severity of SARS-CoV-2 or COVID as well. So it is very good. That is one area which I keep forgetting. So when I'm taking my supplements, I always forget the fish liver and then uh, fish oil, and then I go and find it. Um, Kevin says, Dr. Bean, do you think it would be okay with the immune system if after taking Pfizer, then in seven months I take Novavax? It should be fine. Yes. Um. <laughs> Five out of four people struggle with math. Thank you. <laughs> Five out of four. Uh, so let's see more questions. Becky, question. But prior studies with MERS and SARS showed that using the full spike protein led to harmful immune responses, whereas the RBD part did not cause that. It is interesting that nowadays we are doing RBD type antibodies and we are seeing that that is causing immune system to be... Uh, badly go mad. So in this research, they, they had a lot of research data written, which is a good thing. In one area, they said it is actually better to go after fu fusion protein instead of the RBD because RBD-based antibodies can cause issues. So I think there are all kind of studies, Becky, which are doing this. William Goff says, and I'm, I'm seeing a lots of questions. My apologies. I'm not able to get to them all in time. So I'm not ignoring, I'm just trying to catch up. So William says, do you know if there are any eye drops that work to stop COVID infecting the eyes so goggles aren't needed or is this super low chance and not needed? 
it's not a low chance if the eyes are open of course they don't ask us to wear goggles all the time so maybe they think it is a low chance but virus can be caught from there as well the only thing is i have so i'm trying to be convinced that it is a super low chance because people don't wear glasses all the time number one and number two when we catch the virus we develop oropharyngeal uh, issues we don't get eye issues that much although people who get covered just like one of my team member in india is sick right now and he says that his eyes are burning so but that is not a very common thing so maybe um, we can just bank on the goggles okay so Giladoni says dr bean haven't scientists used e coli for many vaccines with plasmids previously why didn't they do this before mrna vaccines yes they have and that is what i discussed as well for example cholera vaccine or pertussis vaccine which are life-saving vaccines are made with this platform they call these technologies as their platforms so they are made with these platforms so um, why did they not do it i think moderna and pfizer Moderna was the one that was already working on messenger RNA. Pfizer, I think, followed them as well. So everybody tried. Whoever could come up with something, they did it. I think the companies with the larger budgets uh, did more. This was an inexpensive vaccine, lesser than a dollar. That bacteria, if you give it to the developing countries where the factories are to make these vaccines, they can just make those vaccine. And in one liter, there are tons of doses available. So I think may not have been very attractive. But from the functional point of view, it seems to be very interesting. Doug says, Supervax antibodies against fusion protein. You said it was primarily T cell immunity. Correct. So sorry, I should not say antibodies. The immune system reaction against fusion protein. And here is the deal. So I was wrong to say antibodies. So I agree with that. And then just to ex explain why the T cells can work with that. T cells also have receptors on their surface. These receptors are the ones, T cell receptors, that are similar to antibodies. Imagine they are fixed antibodies on the surface of the T cell. They have binding sites as well. These binding sites per T cell are different. And then they are the ones that would bind with, let's say, fusion protein here. So yes, it is the T cell, especially the cytotoxic T cell. <laughs> so this is the SARS-CoV-2. He is totally upset because his fusion protein area is now bound to T-cell. So correct. Thank you very much for uh, catching that. Sky Native says, question, should chloroquine phosphate be used at the start of symptoms or wait until status is more severe? Thank you. Uh, so I am not a fan of chloroquine phosphate at all. So hydroxy is something, and that should be used early on. Uh, ivermectin can be used in all phases. Otherwise, drugs, remdesivir type drugs or antiviral drugs in the beginning and then this, the infl inflammation and immune system controlling drugs in the later phase. Uh, as Manoj says, can a virus mutate itself and become air spread? So I hope you're saying that can a virus change its mode of action, mode of spread? For example, let's say if it is spread through fecal route. Now, instead of that, it is spread through air route. So in theory, yes, but there are viruses are pretty committed to their family and they stay within that and they keep mutating there within that frame. Arun says, how these E. coli present antigen on their surface? I didn't get that mechanism. OK, so I hope that lecture is then understandable for others as well. Let me explain it once more here. It's actually, I I, I I laugh and smile and these little mechanisms that happen, I just love them. So here is, so let's say this is the bacteria. Now, and let's say bacteria wants, actually E. coli have a lot of cilia on them, right? They have long um, shapes on them hair like things. So let's say a bacteria wants to put cilia out there. All the cilia grow on them, just like hair grow on them. I'm just using that as an example to say we want to put that out. Bacteria would put lots of kind of uh, proteins. So let's say we want to put this little cilia out. Bacteria have a channel called automated automatic transporters. What they do is they bind to the protein that needs to go out. 
and simply pull it and move it through it as a passenger and then attach it on the surface. Or just let it go on the surface and then it gets attached like a magnet over there. So this is the AT's function. What they did was in this vaccine, they built a new genetic code for this channel. And instead of binding the channel to bacterial proteins, they modified the gen genetic code and trained this channel to bind with the, to build the fusion protein and then present it on the surface. So when something comes out of this channel, it automatically gets stuck on the surface. That's a rule. So when the, these channels are secreting these proteins, they just start getting stuck on the surface. So now the bacteria has little decorations on it. And then the immune system comes in, let's say a macrophage. They would have, you know, patterns and damps. They have pamps and damps and thal like receptors. They would recognize these things. They would eat up the whole bacteria, break it down in that process. This will be broken down. And then they would present them on the surface and the immune training would occur. Good question. Um, Manoj says, what makes a virus travel in the air? Nothing makes it travel in the air. Uh, virus itself doesn't have any intent or life as well to kind of think about it. Uh, it just sits, it is present in our droplet. So when we are talking, I'm talking right now, or laughing or screaming or coughing, the droplets that come out, bacteria is sitting in them, the virus is sitting in them, and it travels with them. <laughs> Barbara says, Roman B, that's delicious. Chocolate and walnuts, best dessert ever. Who is having dessert without me? <laughs> Fatima says, question, sir, what's your take on Sinopharm vaccine being given in Pakistan? I like Sinopharm, and I have talked about Sinopharm as well. Uh, some of my friends have it, their families. Uh, one of them had the family sick, and he was fully protected and became mildly, um, had the mild, mild symptoms for 10 hours or so. This was Luffy, by the way. He's running around and... I think Luffy and Kyrie are playing. So it is it is a pretty good uh, drug, a pretty good vaccine. So France says, Dr. Bean Medical Lectures, could the super vax be easily engineered and made into pill form like Nova to produce a lot of mucosal IgA? So Thank you so much for reminding it. I forgot to mention this. This vaccine can be taken orally or parenterally. I mean, parenterally meaning, you know, like intramuscular or orally. So yes, it can be taken orally as well. And it has its effect. So yes, you're correct. I remissed talking about it. <laughs> Luffy is activated, yes. <laughs> Luffy is activated. Yes, he is. Um, Jaladoni says, did you say that GAT issues after vaccine both doses? It can occur with those. Yes. Jim says, can oral inhaled steroids be used instead of IV to treat COVID in math mass plus? If so, approximate quantity. So I have done a discussion about budesonide. Budesonide is used. A few days ago, I did a video about the budesonide study in UK, in which they have talked about how many actuations per day and what is the quantity. So please watch that as well. And there is a quantity in it that they used. And, and your question that can that be used? Yes. Uh, when the problem is systemic, when the virus has grown a lot and the COVID is too rampant and the immune system is now reactive in the body, then systemic steroids are needed too. But in the early phases, it is possible to give uh, or, uh, inhaled steroids. One care I always take is I don't start it in the beginning. I am always afraid of increasing the viral replication, but many doctors start it in the early. I would always go for three days, four days, and then after. Lizzie says, 
Has the mRNA technology been used in previous vaccines? If so, which ones? None. So they have tried it for cancers and for other cases. It did not work very well. This is their first product out in public that is successful. We don't know yet, but that's the point. Uh, Sky Native, last question. Thanks. The other evening you stated that people with healthier immune system perform worse than others. If true, why are the highest death rates older people? No, I didn't say healthier. I think the if I remember it correctly, the question was that if we make our immune system stronger or something healthier, I always talk about optimized immune system to for it to work correctly. An optimized immune system, wherever it is, would work correctly. What we still do not know is how does cytokine storm occur? It occurs in many people who are totally healthy. So healthy immune system is good. My whole year is spent in hoping that we would figure out a healthy immune system by going to uh, woods, jungles, or by uh, doing light exercises or by taking supplements. So healthy, optimized immune system is a good immune system. Boosted immune system, which is, I would call it autoimmune type, these are not that good. But even for the boosted immune systems, autoimmune immune system, we don't know if the people would develop cytokine storms or not. Daniel says, question, Dr. Bean, I used anti-inflammatory drugs, NSAIDs, after six days of my second Pfizer dose. Will that interfere and affect the vaccine even after six days? Many thanks. No. Even on the same day, it should not. So CDC says you can take them on the same day when you come back from vaccine. And the reason is very simple. Think about it. Forget about the vaccine for a second. When we get infected, we take these things. Correct? If these anti-inflammatory would just go and suppress the immune system to react to the infection, then taking an anti-inflammatory painkillers, antipyretic would never allow the infection to go away. But we take, we are infected, we have fever, and we take these things and our infection is handled as well. Sometimes we need, uh, um, what is that, antibiotics. So in this case, same behavior. You've taken vaccine, your body is working, you are just taking care of some of the uh, symptoms. M. Gregory says, how did the 1918 flu mutate to a weak, weaker flu? M. Gregory, that's a good question. I'll have to do some research. Of course, it is not there, at least not in that pandemic. What I do not know is, it, is it because it was, it found just like SARS-CoV-2, it found us all empty vessels to get into or, and then as we filled up or herd immunity was established, then it had to ramp down or something else. So I'll have to do some research. <laughs> Kevin says, Dr. Bean, would cannabis consumption hurt the vaccine effectiveness? I have no idea. Uh, that is one area I'll have to, I don't think it should, but I can't say. Uh, Dr. Griff Bean says, Dr. B, who is developing this new vax? Nobody is. So these are researchers from two universities who came together, put it together. They made the platform. By the platform, what that means is they researched that what kind of protein to attack, fusion protein. Then they went and found the uh, bacteria of interest from Tokyo University. Then they further modified it to make its surface a little more clean. Then they created a plasmid that can make SARS-CoV-2 fusion protein, injected it into the bacteria, kept the bacteria alive, and now that bacteria is available, tested it in the beginning as well. So this is what they mean by saying platform is ready. This can be given to any factory that is making, for example, cholera or pertussis vaccines, and they can start making it within two to three weeks, or somebody else would do it, or maybe nobody would do it. That is the, the point. It's not commercial yet. Is Gold Country Russ here? I didn't see him or her. Um, I, I don't see Gold Country. Did, did someone see them? It's interesting. Unless Gold Country <laughs> blocked me. Jessica Milton says, which is best cod liver oil or omega-3, 6, and 9? Is there a difference? I think they are similar. I'm sure that there are lots of uh, details in there. I have used whatever fish oil I got. Uh, Kathy Hardison says, question, five days out from first Pfizer vaccine, 
stomach rumbles and movements rusty orange is that vaccine related is that the type of jat problem possibly it is vaccine related and the reason is that vaccine takes a few days to make antibodies just like infection does and when those antibodies are made then they would start appearing in the body or an immune system would then start responding these these antibodies would start attaching here and there to the vaccine areas and the remaining system would respond so that can cause inflammatory responses which may be the git issue as well i cannot guarantee it is that but yes for example thrombosis starts from 5 day to 17 days as well because that is when antibodies are being made and most of the people 50% of the population for thrombosis has 9 days so similarly git issues could be vaccine related arun says you along with guest lecture with dr paul marek the replication phase is of 7 days and then cytokine storm for next 7 days the replication phase i suppose changed so <clears throat> i know and i i also remember the diagram that dr paul marek had the important thing to note is that we all have different time frames for our antibodies to be produced for our imagine there, there is a factory in all of us the and <coughs> excuse me antigen arrives in our body antigen is picked up by innate arm cells processed in them presented on the surface naive t cell connects and then the remaining so there there is an assembly line in some people that assembly line becomes active within 3 4 days in some people that becomes active in fifth day some nine there are people who had sars cov2 antibody production started on 29th day which is very different from 5 days 7 days so uh, dr paul marek's diagram was more of a general uh, or majority observation that in majority of the people healthy people this by seventh day the viral phase is going down and the if at all immune phase might start so it's not necessary that everybody has exact same pattern sky native says uh, question sorry i lied now the the last question okay is it smart to let a fever try to kill the infection and only treat fever when uh, yes it is actually good many uh, infectious disease doctors do not uh, ask to reduce the fever right away but the thing is this for each degree fever increase we have 10 degree heart beat increase with the fever increase we have more bodies um, calorie burning as well more energy requirements to more water requirements as well so we have to make sure that when we allow the fever to stay higher then we the body can support that fever so if it is the person is too fragile or if the person is dehydrated or if they do not have the right um health to have a sustained higher fever then they might be in trouble so i think it is fine i just don't want to generalize it to say everybody should go up to 103 but usually higher fever allows body to combat and fry the viruses and bacteria is better viruses and bacteria usually do not replicate much at higher temperatures this is why for for example if we take corona virus we give this example that human corona viruses do not cause systemic problems because they like to live in the cooler temperature where they replicate better and that's why they live here because they, there is continuous air that is coming in and they like the temperature sars cov2 can go deeper in the tissues because it can replicate at warmer temperatures so that simply tells us that usually pathogens cannot replicate easily at higher temperatures that is why our body brings the temperature high so if we bring the temperature down very fast then we are actually helping the pathogen than the body but it is it, it is an art to keep the temperature right and keep an eye on the temperature as well and keep the health of the patient in in uh, check as well um <clears throat> lucinda says 
do you have any thoughts on so again for the kitchen reasons i'll just take another two three minutes and then we'll stop uh, lucinda says do you have any thoughts on recent publications around gmcsf being one of the main cause of cytokine storm um so we had talked about this before as well and lenzilumab has been a good one as well i look at the latest studies Christine says, Dr. Bean, didn't Gold Country say that he was working the next few days? Yes. But somebody said, hello, hello, Gold Country, or something to Gold Country. So I thought he was here. And then I was not able to see him. Um, little Girl says, would you suggest ivermectin prophylaxis for 65 female not vaccinated? HSCRP is three or just hold on for it for, for if getting sick? So I like prophylaxis more than using during the... Um, disease of course during the disease it has to be used but then there is the risk is there so prophylaxis is hcrp is three so prophylaxis is important i would recommend talking with your doctor as well to see so that they can see the whole history and the whole state of the labs to do it i am a fan of fibromectin in prophylaxis uh kathy says would the novavax perform in a similar fashion as Supervax, since it seems as if it works like a true COVID decoy. Um, good question. These spike protein proteins also produce this spike protein at the end of the day. And somehow we don't make uh, uh, antibodies that much against the fusion protein, or maybe we are making it. And maybe that is why whatever vaccine we're taking is helping us stay effective against the other coronaviruses too. Uh, so I think their behavior is going to be the same because at the end of the day, it is spike protein. This vaccine is interesting because they forgot the spike protein. They actually focused further down to the fusion protein only. So instead of the whole hand, which is, let's say, spike protein, they are only picking up the thumb and only presenting that. So now they're sure that the vaccine would generate antibody, antibodies or cytotoxic response to this part of the uh, virus. So that is the interesting part. Lena B says, any concern that mRNA is synthetic? mRNA that is in these vaccines is synthetic. That is correct. And no, I'm not concerned about it because our body makes mRNA all the time. Right now, every single function you are doing and I'm doing, for that, whatever our mechanisms in mechanisms in our cells are working, they are working by making proteins using mRNA. So our, our body is used to them. They actually modify the mRNA, which should not scare us. They modify the mRNA for it to live a little longer. And that's all. Even then, it goes away within two, three days. So I'm not concerned. And I have taken Moderna. So it's not that I'm just saying it. I have taken it too. So iron bubble say iron bubble says omega six and nine is pro-inflammatory. Okay. So let's let's uh, talk for a couple of more questions and then we break. Colombian coffee bean says question: Is there a relationship between heavy initial viral load and cytokine storm symptoms? There have been so many uh, conjectures. It is also thought this way as well that initial viral load, if that is heavy then the response is greater. But we have seen that the virus does not care that if it came in with the lesser load, if it has found the reason to replicate in greater amounts, then it is equal for everybody. So I don't think it is the load issue. It is the just like some people are allergic and some are not. So some people eat peanuts and nothing happens, 80%. And 20%, they just respond wrongly to the uh, peanuts. And their, their immune system says, I don't like it. I think it is a similar behavior here as well. So let's do this. Let's break for today. Uh, please, I hope that you're OK if we can break now. Uh, please like, subscribe, and share. If you would not like to subscribe or share, then at least like it. That helps YouTube know that this is a useful thing. And with that, if you would like to support this work, there is a there are three links in the description. 
One is to buy me coffees. The other one is to be a patron. And the third one is to support this work in general. Thank you very much. Tomorrow morning, I would not have a chat. I would be in rehearsal with Dr. Tess Laurie. We have the Ivermectin conference over this Saturday and Sunday. I still owe all of us here the link to join the conference. I haven't gotten it yet. So tomorrow, hopefully, after the, re the rehearsal, they would share the link with me. And I would present it to you. I am the chairman for the conference. So let's see how it goes. I hope it, it goes well. So with this, thank you very much. And I would see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.